Greetings viewers, this is the Mathinator coming at you with another math video. And what I will be doing in this video is the SAT practice test number one, section three, math, no calculator. Now you can find your own copy of this test, a blank copy, at collegeboard.org. That way you can work this test along with me or work this section along with me helping to just build up your math skills and understanding of the different types of concepts and material that you will find on the SAT. Now I always suggest make sure, make sure, not just a suggestion, some advice here, read every question carefully, math section or whatever, but you want to make sure you are reading the question carefully, make sure you understand the question, identify and understand your givens, identify and understand what exactly is it asking me to solve, so that way you'll know when you have arrived at the correct answer. And of course, the more you practice, the more you will build up your math skills and have an arsenal of skills um, ready to go to help you out when you take the test so that you can go through it smoothly and efficiently and stress-free knowing that you have properly prepared. So what I will be doing in this video, I will read each question once and then I will go about solving it and not just solving that particular question, but also just giving, talking a little bit about the um, concept that is involved as much as I possibly can because of course it is about knowing the concepts not being able to solve just the particular um, questions on this practice test. So I will also be giving some explanations and some tips, test taking tips. Okay, if x minus 1 divided by 3 equals k and k equals 3, what is the value of x? So what we have here is a simple substitution and linear equation. Alright, so we're trying to solve for x, All right, identify what is the value of x? That's what we're solving for. So x minus 1 divided by 3. Here's our substitution. It says that k equals 3. So we can substitute that in. All right, and now we're just solving for x. x minus 1 is going to equal 9, which means x has to equal 10. For i equals the square root of negative 1, what is the sum of 7 plus 3i plus negative 8 plus 9i? So here we're dealing with complex numbers, or imaginary numbers. They're in the form a plus bi, well, technically a plus or minus bi. So when we want to add two different complex numbers, we're going to add the real portion. So 7 plus 3i plus negative 8 plus 9i. So we're going to add the real portion. So we're going to add the 7 plus 8, or 7 plus negative 8. So that's negative 1. So right there, that rules out c and d. All right, one of the helpful things is being able to see which options we can just go ahead and rule out. So now instead of a 1 in 4 chance, if we were to guess, now we have a 1 in 2 chance. But anyway, and then we're going to add the coefficients on our imaginary portion. So 3 plus 9 is 12, and we keep the i there, and we see our answer is negative 1 plus 12i. On Saturday afternoon, Armand sent M text messages each hour for 5 hours, and Tyrone sent P text messages each hour for 4 hours. Which of the following represents the total number of messages sent by Armand and Tyrone on Saturday afternoon? All right, um, so this is really all about interpretation. So let's look at total number of messages. That is what we're looking for. We're looking for a total number. A total number of it is a sum. So let's go ahead and rule out A and B because they do not represent a sum. And just real quick, uh, when we look at A, what's going on with A is they're trying to get you to say, all right, I'm going to add 5 plus 4 and then multiply M times P. But that doesn't make sense. That's how you get that um, 9MP. But why would you add 5 and 4 but then multiply MP? And on answer choice B, what they're trying to get you to say, okay, let's multiply 5 times 4 and multiply M times P. That would give you... 20 MP, but that is not correct. Again, we're looking for a total number. So now, how are we going to figure out the total number of messages? Well, we know Armand sent M messages, and he sent them each hour for five hours. So the total number of messages sent by Armand is 5M. That goes ahead and rules out D. We know our answer choice is C. Well, let's go ahead and finish that off. The total, so plus, and then Tyrone sent P messages per hour, and he did it for four hours. There's our answer. Kathy is a repair technician for a phone company. Each week, she receives a batch of phones that need repairs. The number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of each day can be estimated with the equation P equals 108 minus 23D, where P is the number of phones left and D is the number of days she has worked that week. 
what is the meaning of the value 108 in this equation? All right, so we have a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, except now they have written it as y equals b minus mx. So it says um, each week she receives a batch of phones that need to be repaired. So each week she gets a certain number. That is a constant each week. We need to recognize that what she receives each week is our y-intercept. That is the number when our x, or in this case, when d equals 0. So she starts off with 108. All right. Um, Kathy will complete the repairs within 108 days. That does not make sense because it tells us that d is the number of days she has worked that week. All right. That equation does not lead, lend us towards going with A. Kathy starts each week with 108 phones to fix. Now, remember I said the y-intercept is the value when x equals 0 or when d equals 0 in this case. And we see if d equals 0, she's going to have 108. P is going to equal 108. All right. Um, now, Kathy repairs phones at a rate of 108 power. The rate is our slope, so we can identify that 23 is going to be our rate. So that rules out C and D, which brings us back to B as the correct answer choice there. X squared Y minus 3Y squared plus 5XY squared minus negative X squared Y plus 3XY squared minus 3Y squared. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? So we are adding two separate polynomials. And so when we're doing that, uh, let's see here. Answer choice A says 4x squared y squared. Well, when we're adding polynomials, we do not change our exponents. So there is no x squared y squared term in the original, so we can rule out A. Now, so let's go ahead and look at this here. This is all about combining like terms. So we have x squared y minus 3y squared plus 5xy squared. And we're subtracting from that um, our second polynomial. But what I want to do is instead of subtracting, we're going to add the two. We're going to go ahead and distribute a negative 1 across that second polynomial so that way we can add the two instead of um, doing the subtraction. Because, of course, subtraction is just adding the opposite. So when we distribute that negative 1, that changes the signs of all of the the terms in that second polynomial to their opposite. And now our x squared y, that negative x squared y becomes a positive x squared y. Now we also have to look at the fact that the second polynomial is written in a different order. So that 3y squared, let's put our like terms together, that negative 3y squared is going to become a positive 3y squared. And that plus 3xy squared is going to become a negative 3xy squared. Now we have all of our like terms lined up, so we're going to add x squared y plus x squared y is 2x squared y. So that rules out b. Negative 3y squared plus 3y squared, those sum to 0. So we're not going to have that um, y squared term. So that rules out d. Gives us c as our answer. And then 5 minus 3, that's a plus 2. And again, when we are adding polynomials, we do not change the exponents on our variables. All right. A pediatrician uses the model above to estimate the height h of a boy in inches in terms of the boy's age a in years between the ages of 2 and 5. Based on the model, what is the estimated increase in inches of a boy's height each year? So the estimated increase each year, that is a rate. We have another linear equation in the form y equals mx plus b. So h equals 3a plus 28.6. 28.6, again, that is our value that we're starting off with. That would be our y-intercept if we were to graph this. And since 3 is in the place of our slope, 3 is our rate. So as, we, as I said, the estimated increase each year is a rate of growth. So our rate of growth is 3a. All right, the formula above gives the monthly payment m needed to pay off a loan of p dollars at r percent annual interest over nine over n months. Which of the following gives p in terms of m, r, and n? All right, this one looks kind of complex, but um, what we run across a lot in the SAT is they'll give you a formula and say, all right, now solve this formula for some other variable. So now we want to solve for p. 
And as we look there, we're multiplying P by this nasty looking fraction right here. So in order to get P by itself, we have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal or by the inverse of that fraction, which means on the other side, what we have in our denominator is going to move up to the numerator. And our numerator is going to move down to the denominator. So we can go ahead and rule out C and D. Now, which one of our expressions, A or B, has this expression right here as the numerator? And we see that it is answer choice B. So B is our correct answer. If A over B equals 2, what is the value of 4B over A? Now, there's a couple different ways we could approach this. Um, one way is to just invert our original statement our original expression. If a over b equals 2, that means b over a equals 1 half. And 4b over a is just equal to 4 times b over a, which is 4 times 1 half, which equals 2. Answer choice C. The other way we could have done this is to say if A over B equals 2, that means A equals 2B. So now the value of 4B over A, we can use substitution. 4B over A is the same thing as saying 4B divided by 2B, which equals 2. All right. 3X plus 4Y equals negative 23. 2Y minus X equals negative 19. What is the solution XY to the system of equations above? couple different ways we could um, go about solving this, figuring it out, and we could use elimination, but one thing when it comes to system of equations, if we see that one of our variables has a coefficient of 1, let's go ahead and isolate that variable and use substitution. So isolating that x will give us x equals 2y plus 19. Now I can take that and substitute so I have 3 times and 3 times 2y plus 19 plus 4y that equals negative 23. Now use our distributive property 6y plus 57 plus 4y equals negative 23. Now let's go ahead and combine our like terms and get the y by itself on the left. So that gives us 10y equals negative 80. So y equals negative 8. And the only answer choice with y equaling negative 8 is b. That is our correct answer. Now we could have used elimination, but that would have been more complex because we either would have had to multiply our second equation by 2 and eliminate y or multiply the second equation by 3 and eliminate x. But again, as I said, system of equations, we have a variable with 1 as a coefficient. Let's isolate that variable and use substitution. All right. g of x equals ax squared plus 24. For the function g defined above, a is a constant and g of 4 equals 8. What is the value of g of negative 4? Again, two ways we could solve this. I'll actually show the more complex way first. Um, if g of x equals ax squared plus 24, we know g of 4 equals 8. That means a times 4 squared plus 24 equals 8. So 16a plus 24 equals 8, giving us 16a equals negative 16, giving us a equals negative 1. So now we know that g of x is equal to negative x squared plus 24. And so g of negative 4, we just want to substitute negative 4 in for x. And that gives us negative negative 4 squared plus 24. What does that equal? So that's negative 16 plus 24. And that equals 8. So answer choice A. The other way, all right, and which is a little quicker and I think even better, if we understand parabolas, all right, um, even without knowing whether A is positive or negative, because of course if A is positive, it's going to open up. If A is negative, it opens down, but that doesn't matter here. 
because our parabolas or um, x squared plus 24 is an even function. It's symmetric. And actually, ax squared plus 24 is going to be shifted up. Okay, it is symmetric. And we want, and what that means is that if g of 4 equals 8, all right, so we have the point 4, 8, it's going to have the same value for negative x. So negative 4 is also going to be, have a return a y value of 8. So we could use the symmetric properties of parabolas in that case. All right. In the equations above, B and C represent the price per pound in dollars of beef and chicken, respectively, X weeks after July 1st during last summer. What was the price per pound of beef when it was equal to the price per pound of chicken? All right. So we have our two equations, one for beef, one for chicken, and we want to know the price per pound when beef and chicken were equal. So that means we need to set these two equations equal to each other. So 2.35... 0.25x equals 1.75 plus 0.40x. Okay, and we've got these decimals going on, and this is our no calculator section. All right, but our decimals are pretty easy to work with. Um, what we're going to end up, let's move our x over to the left. That gives us negative 0.15x equals negative 0.60. Now, we could clear out those decimals by multiplying everything by negative 100 to get 15x equals 60 alright so but just recognizing the 15 and the 60 that means x is going to equal to 4 alright now we got x equals 4 what does that mean how do we know when we have the correct answer well the question is what was the price per pound of beef when it was equal to the price per pound of chicken so that X tells us four weeks after July 1st, now we have to figure out what was the price of beef. So B is going to equal 2.35 plus 0 0.25 times 4. And hopefully you don't have too much trouble with the fact that 0 0.25 times 4 equals 1. All right. 0.25 is 1 4 so that's plus 1 so now the price of beef was 2.35 plus 1 three dollars and 35 cents all right a line in the xy plane passes through the origin and has a slope of 1 7th which of the following points lies on the line all right so very important detail they put in here is that it passes through the origin so that tells us we're dealing with a direct variations equation here a direct variation line so it goes through the origin, it goes through 0, 0, and it has a slope of 1, 7. So if it goes through 0, 0, and have a, has a slope of 1, 7, that means it passes through the point 7, 1. All right. We know when they talk about the slope, the denominators are x, the numerators are y. So it passes through the point 1, 7. Or, it has, yeah, it has a slope of 1, 7. So that means from that point, all right, since all of our choices are positive, from that point, we're going to have to go another 7, and up another one so that's going to be at 14 2 because that slope is just going to keep going that same rate of change so 14 2 is going to be our other point now something else I want to point out when it comes to direct variation is that direct variations have the equation y equals kx which means y divided by k is going to be a constant throughout that line so what we have there is y over k is 1 over 7 so that's going to be in that constant ratio. And if we look at our answer choices, does that equal 0 over 7? No. Um, or actually 7 over 0. Got to remember the y goes in the numerator. Um, does that equal 7 over 1? No. Does it equal 7 over 7? No. But it does equal 14 over 2, which we've already established. If x is greater than 3, which of the following is equivalent to 1 divided by 1 divided by x plus 2 plus 1 divided by x plus 3. This one right here is all about simplifying rational expressions. All right, so simplifying rational expressions. Let's start with simplifying our denominator. So simplifying our denominator, in order to add those two, they've got to have the same denominator. So that means that 1 divided by x plus 2, we're going to multiply by x plus 3 divided by x plus 3. Alright, so our second 
fraction we're going to multiply by x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 so that gives us x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 times x plus 3 and all of that is still underneath 1. Now that will allow us to add x plus 2 plus x plus 3 so that's going to be x plus 3 plus x plus 2 all of that over x plus 2 x plus 3 and I'm going to just go ahead keep putting it there so we don't lose track of that. Now that gives us x plus 3 plus x plus 2 that is 2x plus 5 okay all right 2x plus 5 we see that in our answer choices divided by and now let's go ahead and multiply out x plus 2 times x plus 3 that is our x squared plus 5x plus 6. Hmm, that looks just like answer choice A. Is that the correct answer? Let's go ahead and rule out C and D. Now, but we've also got to remember that that is still the denominator underneath 1. So we have 1 divided by 2x plus 5 divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6. And in order to simplify that, we know dividing by this fraction, there we go, dividing by that fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal, so we're going to multiply 1 times the reciprocal or the inverse of that. So 1 times x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by 2x plus 5 is answer choice B. All right. If 3x minus y equals 12, what is the value of 8x divided by 8 to the x divided by 2 to the y? Hmm. Now starting off with answer choice D. If you're ever given an answer choice like that, you've got to be very careful to make sure you can rule out everything else. All right, but what I'm looking at here is the fact that my three answer choices have exponents. And we have exponents. So what we want to do here is let's rewrite 8 to the x. All right, let's, let's go with our smallest base. All right, we have exponents. Let's see if we can get to our smallest base. So 8, we can say 2 to the third equals 8. All right which means 8 to the x equals 2 to the third raised to the x power. All right, since 8 is 2 to the third, and we're saying 8 to the x, so that's 2 thirds raised to the x power. And you need to know your rules of exponents. If you have a power raised to a power, an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply the two exponents. So we can rewrite 8 to the x as 2 raised to the 3x. All right. And that's divided by 2 to the y. Now, what's the next thing we need to do? We need to simplify this expression further. All right, so all of these are just a sim single exponential expression. So we are dividing, which means we're going to subtract the denominator exponent from the numerator exponent. So that is 2 to the 3x minus y. And now it says 3x minus y equals 12, so we can substitute 12 in for 3x minus y in that expression we just have there. So the value of 8 to the x divided by 2 to the y is 2 to the 12th. All right. If ax plus 2 times bx plus 7 equals 15x squared plus cx plus 14 for all values of x and a plus b equals 8, what are the two possible values for c? Okay, how do we approach this? Well, since we're equating these two expressions, let's go ahead and uh, expand ax plus 2 times bx plus 7, and that will give us abx squared plus 7ax plus 2bx plus 14. And it's saying that is equal to our expression, and I'll, I'm only going to write this out one time, 15x squared plus cx plus 14. So we need to set our coefficients so that these two expressions are equal. Well, 14 equals 14, so let's go ahead and don't worry about that. Um, and we know that AB, A times B, equals 15. And we know that A plus B equals 8. Well, our factors of 15 are 1 and 15, 3 and 5. So now we know that A and B are 3 and 5. Well, which is which? Okay, is A3 or is A5? Well, look at what it's asking us. What are two possible values for C? So C is equal to, right there a little bit, 
C is equal to 7A plus 2B. So the two possible values for C, well, if A is 3, then that means C equals 7 times 3 plus 2 times 5. That's 21 plus 10. That equals 31. The other possible value for C is what if A is 5? So that's 7 times 5 plus 2 times 3. And that is 35 plus 6, which is 41. So the two possible values for C are 31 and 41. And that is the end of our multiple choice portion of this test. Now on to the free response. If T is greater than 0 and T squared minus 4 equals 0, what is the value of T? So this is a straight up um, two things we need to recognize about this. All right, first of all, we have a difference of two squares. So we can write that out as t plus 2, t minus 2 equals 0, which gives us t equals negative 2, oh, or t equals 2. Now it says t is greater than 0, so we just want to pick our positive number. Other way we could have done this is also recognizing that 4 is a perfect square. We could have said t squared equals 4, and then taking the square root of each side that gives us t equals positive or negative 2. And since it says that t is greater than 0, again, we pick our positive number. All right, a summer camp counselor wants to find a length x in feet across a lake as represented in the sketch above. The lengths represented by AB, EB, BD, and CD on the sketch were determined to be 1,800 feet, 1,400 feet, 700 feet, and 800 feet, respectively. Segments A, C, and D, E intersect at B, and angle A, E, B, and angle C, D, B have the same measure. What is the value of X? All right, nice little fun geometry problem here. Uh, so let's look at, let's go ahead and write down what we're given. So it says A, B is 1,800 feet, so let's go ahead and write that in. And it says that E, B is... 1400 feet. BD is 700. There. And what was the last one? We had CD is 800. 800 feet. All right. Next thing we've got uh, we have a vertical angle. B is a vertical angle, which means these two angles are congruent. All right, vertical angle theorem. Now, the next thing we've got, well, uh, we have two similar triangles. All right, if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in a second triangle, then those two triangles are similar because the angles in each triangle have to sum to 180. So since E and D are congruent, B is congruent to itself, that means A and C also have to be the same measure. Now that we know we have similar triangles, we know that they are going to be in ratio, so we need to write them, set them up. So that means we have, I don't know how well I did that there. Um, all right, so that means we have D, C, and B. Uh, and now when we did that, that turned it around so that here's our DB is 700. All right, we don't know CB, that doesn't matter, but we can see that our similar angles that we have, or our sides in similarity, those corresponding, 1400 corresponds to 700, which means we're in a ratio of 2 to 1, all right? And so we want to know what X is. We know that CD is 800. So X has to be twice as much as that. So X is equal to 1,600, 1,600 feet. All right. X plus Y equals negative 9. X plus 2Y equals negative 25. According to the system of equations above, what is the value of X? All right. So again, we see that x has a coefficient of 1, but we're trying to solve for x. So we need to eliminate y so we can solve for x, but that y also has a coefficient of 1, which means we can isolate that y. 
So y equals negative 9 minus x. I mean, we could have multiplied that first equation by 2 and eliminated y that way. But again, as I said a little while ago, if we have a variable with a coefficient of 1, let's just isolate that variable. Now we have for our second equation, using substitution, x plus 2 times negative 9 minus x, that equals negative 25, giving us x minus 18 minus 2x equals negative 25. Combining like terms, we have negative x equals negative 7 and x equals 7. So the value of x is 7. 7, 7. Lucky 7. Let's try writing that one more time. There we go right there. In a right triangle, one angle measures x degrees where a sine of x degrees equals 4 fifths. What is the cosine of 90 degrees minus x degrees? This right here is a straight up co-function identity problem. Do you know your co-functions? The identity that sine of x squared equals cosine of 90 degrees minus x squared. So that means the cosine of 90 degrees minus, I said x squared, the cosine of 90 degrees minus x degrees is going to be equal to that, so that it's also going to equal 4 fifths or 0 0.8. There. Last one. If a equals 5 square root of 2 and 2a equals square root of 2x, what is the value of x? This one right here is a straight up substitution problem. All right, trying to solve for x, so we're going to substitute a with 5 square root of 2. It's not a very good looking 5. That equals the square root of 2x. So let's go ahead and let's get, that means we have 10 square root of 2 equals square root of 2x. Make sure that there. Now we need to unlock that x from that radical prison. So we're going to square both sides. And that gives us 200, all right, because of course we need to square that 10, giving us 100, times square root of 2 squared, which is 2, so 100 times 2, 200, and that equals 2x, meaning 100 equals x, 100 equals x, 100. All right, and there we have it, my scholars, we are at the end of this video, keep practicing and good luck.